Hi all, I have another mega exciting engine versus engine game from the TCEC 2016. This is uh, in round 10. Houdini 4, that's an engine I used to use, uh, before going to Stockfish, uh, but I still have it on my machine. It is very, very powerful. It was playing white against an engine called Fire 5. Now these two are ranks 3 and 4 respectively. Houdini's rank 3, Fire's rank 4 on the CCRL 4040 uh, rating list. Uh, so 3255 actually is given to the rating to Houdini and Fire is given 3207. So there's a bit of a gulf there in terms of rating. Let's see what happens here. Remember the first few moves are decided by the opening book. So I think it's like the first eight moves. So we get actually a King's Engine Defense, which is still one of my favorite weapons, especially in Blitz Chess. Now here we have H3. We have black playing E5, D5, Knight A6. This pin, Bishop G5. Black unpins. We have Bishop D3. I think they're in their own territory now thinking for themselves knight d7 which liberates of course the f pawn and that c5 square might be useful to use at some point as well although generally you don't want to encourage queenside expansion so if it's just a temporary outpost it's not sometimes worthwhile to put a knight on c5 we're just encouraging b4 later with tempo uh, but conversely this bishop here is subject to tempo gain and black wants to play on the king side so that's but by the same token shouldn't be encouraging a kingside attack and okay so after castling we have f5 and this bishop uh it seems you know stuck out there it's the only piece on the fifth rank here but it is also subject to tempo gain from h6 which as i mentioned just now it might be encouraging black uh for a kingside attack is Houdini playing with fire? Ha ha, pardon the pun. To have this bishop here, isn't it just encouraging an attack? Knight d2, which blocks in the bishop. And that gives the idea that white is prepared to put the bishop, zigzag it to h2. Is it going to be really defensive on h2? The knight is ready potentially for getting to c4 one day, perhaps. But for the moment, why it seems to be literally playing with fire because tempo gain and it seems to be a ready-made attack here g5 f4 a king's engine player would perhaps delight at this position because now after knight f6 there's the prospect of g4 also the queen is ready to come to g6 if needed to break through this g4 once g4 happens you can open the g file and that'll be quite dangerous a3, white's queenside attack seems to be a bit slow for b4 and c5 later. g4 immediately, so already some implications for concrete threats now after knight takes g4. There's queen h5 on the cards, which will be threatening a mate in one. Bishop e2, we have queen h5, white has to protect now. f3, the alternative of, of giving up the light square bishop doesn't seem particularly uh, appetizing. Uh, but might be from a human perspective seen as as the more stubborn way to proceed in this position uh, because uh, if we look if we look at this position with f3 uh, although the bishops uh, hemmed in you might think there's more chances but in reality black really has got all all the upper cards upper trump cards here the g file can still be used this bishop can sometimes come to h4 the rooks can simply double on g2. It's an ideal king's engine defense position in any case. So white played knight f3. And we have now bishop f6, which gives the possibility of getting the bishop to come out like this to either b6 or a5 if c6 is played later. And this is seen in many king's engine master games, actually, that this bishop, which is hemmed in by its own pawn on e5, can find opportunity sometimes and also Sparf has often demonstrated just coming to h4 to g3 later as well so the bishop via f6 can bounce into key squares we have now king h1 and note white does seem pretty helpless here king h8 it seems black is ready to just double rooks on the g file 
on that g-pawn b4 is this a scary queenside attack not really rook f7 we have the knight going to b1 now rook g7 the knight comes to d2 white's play seems basically aimless and helpless it does seem a fundamentally helpless position uh, with this very very nasty pin and these rooks coming now to put pressure on g2 we have queen e1 which does free the rook up if it has to come to g1 uh, f2 is now protected but that's quite an expensive piece to be protecting just f2 the rooks just double okay so yeah this looks just extremely unpleasant and helpless rook b1 and now this classic idea bishop d1 this is a real classic idea that uh, this dark square bishop unlike this pinned piece here can potentially come out on this very sensitive diagonal we have rook b3 now this is the worst placed piece in this position it doesn't seem to be doing much uh, it comes to b8 and with that there's some opportunities to reroute later into the game knight d7 to f6 or maybe knight d7 to c5 later if if white gives up that c5 square we have rook g1 which is afforded of course by the queeny one but really it seems the opening has given white just a completely defensive position here with pin pieces it seems fairly helpless so really what we're seeing here is kind of the ideal moves any king's indian player would strive to play uh, especially with this dark square bishop which is is fairly instructive and you do see this pattern in kings in defense games in human games that this bishop can add more weight to the attack so finally like c6 and yeah you know, white is just waiting here for bishop p6 uh but gives up now the c5 square with b5 and this is actually pretty dangerous believe it or not the c5 square as we're going we're to see because this knight can now use that c5 on route to help influence the attack on the king's side but first bishop a5 uh now threatens immediately bishop takes d2 so if queen takes d2 that's knight f2 checkmate just to show that on the board bishop takes d2 queen takes knight takes f2 would be checkmate so white has to protect uh, f1 um, because the other alternative by the way is just getting mated on h2 as well um, white has to try and protect against that uh, so let me see so <clears throat> so we have rook b3 might be eight sorry after bishop a5 we have rook f1 protecting f2 so this seems to be safeguarding things because at the moment even knight takes h2 knight takes the queen is attacked there's no chance for rook takes g2 just yet with the queen attacked we have c takes d5 c takes d5 and yeah this this is a really attacking move which you might not expect so as it's on points I've, I've previously mentioned actually uh, can you guess black's move which is actually a, to the start of a really crushing attack and the way I'm, sp I'm talking about it you probably won't guess it so <laughs> I'm adding some challenge here if I gave you five seconds to pause the video black to play what would you play in this position so five seconds starting from now okay bishop c8 it's the start of a crushing attack believe it or not we've already got two major pins in the position we just need to reroute this knight to c5 it vacates d7 to go to c5 and you might think what's the significance of that there is a significance because this rook's how many squares has this rook got if, it, if a knight gets to c5 the rook is pushed off the third rank and what's the significance of that well we'll see i'll keep you in suspense queen d1 the queen wants to go away from f2 for a moment maybe to threaten something bishop b6 saying go back queen but the queen doesn't want to go back here now if it did i'm going to show you 
knight c4 just giving up a pawn it seems a sign of defeat uh, of capitulation but if we have the move queen e1 black is improving the position now with knight d7 and coming to c5 for example a4 knight c5 well there's actually rook a3 here to defend the third rank perhaps um but if i give you an easier example <laughs> rook b1 knight c5 there's the idea in this position of crashing through can you see how black could crash through in this position if i give you five seconds here this is very idealistic king's engine ideas with pieces on the queen side having an influence on this configuration here but knight d3 would deflect the bishop away from that uh, attacking the queen which would mean now knight takes h2 so threatening making one knight takes h2 the queen is not being attacked which means rook takes g2 is mating uh, potentially uh, after knight f3 bishop g4 this this is end of game this position here is end of game white's being terminated uh for example here 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 end of game might have to give up the queen or it's double check and mate actually termination yeah so that's a scenario this knight coming into d3 that's that's one of the ideas here which is so crushing uh which i'm trying to show you that to explain why you know perhaps the queen didn't want to go back this knight maneuver uh, the alternative defense is intriguing just to try and keep the rook on on the third rank i'll leave that as an exercise for you if you want to work out why in this position a4 is not plausible i mean it seems as though black's really really optimal maybe i mean at minimum you might think if you want to get the rook off the third rank here to allow knight d3 to let to free up the queen not being attacked maybe a move like bishop a5 we've got this pin here and we're going to have bishop b4 but uh that needs to be checked but it's it's just such a crushing position why is so utterly helpless this is just a dream position to have uh yeah absolute dream position to have so you wouldn't really expect uh too much like yeah there's not too much resistance now after losing the f2 pawn yeah houdini's been really hacked to death in this game knight takes d6 bishop g3 white token he takes on c8 black recaptures yeah h2 is dropping white's got a pawn here which is not really that dangerous knight takes h2 knight g1 attacking the queen queen g6 so the rook still attack e4 is dropping bishop h5 queen takes e4 it's pretty desperate yep losing the exchange as well queen g6 with the idea now of e4 for example now bishop f2 with the idea of for example bishop e3 and rook c1 and the evaluation reaches a point now it's, it's adjudicated that's it end of game it's resigned on houdini's behalf so houdini really did play with fire with that opening sequence uh, you can see that you know openings can give you a massive handicap later even if even if you're you've got the calc you're, the, you're an engine of three two five five this is just a shocking shocking crush you know of a three two five five engine with the white pieces um against the rank four which is three two zero seven pretty pretty good rating pretty good rating as well <laughs> not not too far behind sorry it isn't much of a a gulf there actually between three two zero seven and three two five five but yeah uh so fire is actually i think a free engine as well checking it out if you actually check the ccrl rating list and click on fire it gives you some information about it there's a link to its home page and it says it's a very strong state-of-the-art freeware uci chess engine designed for modern windows systems supports the most recent processors it was previously called firebird and has been in continuous development since january 2010 uh, so it's chess logics uh, development 
efforts. There's a company called Chess Logic, Chess O uh, L O G I K dot com. So Fire has done them proud in this game, but as I say, it shows also, you know, if you have a dream opening position and your opponent is basically paralyzed after the opening, then yeah, I mean you're just building up pressure basically and and they're gonna reach a break a breaking point in position. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed that one. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.